because of our viewers, our sponsors, everyone involved. It's just been it's been wonderful, man. Overwatch so Flat Earth sick. is going for an interesting strategy here. They are banning out the payload maps. They want to force uh, either capture points or King of the Hill. Look at this. They've taken out Nimbani and Dorado. Yeah, and IDDQD is uh, sniffing out the strategy pretty early and they ban yeah, out. They're, no, they're taking out the King of the Hill maps. I think uh, of anything else, they definitely don't want to go back to King of the Hill. That does not seem to be uh, their specialty. Yeah, Flat Earth deviates a little from the oh. strategy and they'll take out Temple of Anubis because, And yeah. down goes Ilios. Ili the Ilios stream is dead. We will not be seeing, seeing Ilios today. Am I even pronouncing that right, Ilios? I think so. Uh, I'm not going to correct you because I don't know the proper pronunciation either. So we're going to we're going to roll with Ilios. All right. We so, well, we're down to three maps, but I think we have a pool of five for our grand mile. We do have. Final, I think so. Hanamura and Volsky are both available here, as well as Gibraltar, Hollywood, and King's Row. So some capture point maps made it in. Uh, Ilios did not make it in, but everything else did. Yeah, we're not going to Hollywood first, which I think is smart by Flat Earth. IDDQD has shown absolute dominance uh, on Hollywood the last several times we've seen them play there. We are going to start off with Watchpoint Gibraltar. Yeah, no surprise seeing uh, Gibraltar uh, here. It oftentimes uh, does quite a bit uh, just in general. Uh, it's one of the more favored maps uh, that we've seen. Uh, many teams are comfortable on it. Uh, it's starting to work its way in the sort of the holy trinity of Nambani, King's Row, and now perhaps Gibraltar. Dorado, not as loved for one reason or another. Yeah, why. which is surprising. I think teams are pretty strong in it, but no one really has a, you know, a super strong opinion that Dorado is our, our favorite map. Although IDDQD mentioned that they really do like playing on Dorado, uh, but they're strong on a great deal of maps. Gibraltar, I think a lot of teams who run good snipers feel very comfortable yes. on, on uh, Gibraltar. So we might see some links on sniper. Of course, crew also very capable of sniping as well. Uh, a lot of very strong players on flat earth. And like I said, I had them at five in my rankings. They're five in our Gosu Gamers uh, global rankings just by the numbers. I have them at five mostly because they can beat IDDQD uh, and that's not a thing that most teams can say. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, they're asking casters, right? We are certainly ready and we're going to be getting into Gibraltar uh, any moment now, Ax. Yeah, I am super ready for this. Uh, it was cool to see mix up play as well as they did today. Um, so, I mean, just watching the scene kind of evolve, you know, IDDQD and Cloud9, formerly Google Me, kind of just erupted and have been nonstop ever since. We've seen early favorites like Envious, you know, not playing and so falling out of the mix. Melty's had struggles the last couple of weeks. Reunited now taking a little bit of a stagger step as well. So mm -hmm. redefining the top of the scenes for sure. But, you know, old standby mix up is, is definitely back in the mix, so to speak. <laughs> mix up back in the mix. Uh, you know, this has been a pun uh, filled stream just in general, so I'm totally OK with that. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd rather have pun streams. It's not like we're really forcing them. They just happen to be words that are very used, um, but it's better than the my dong stream we had like six weeks. Oh, ago. Oh, God. You know, I can say my dong now and I mean crack a smile like it's old news to me. But at the time it was pretty entertaining or just like my dong, my dong. Yeah. And and now we've even said that Chad, of course, is going to really uh, latch on me like my dong. And, you know, yeah, yeah, it, it might be the only force in the world actually capable of reversing the TV D spam. So, you know. Maybe we're doing some good right here. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, um, s something along the lines of as long as it's not that spam, but they are definitely taking over Twitch chat. It's it's kind of a cool little rivalry, too, if we do see IDDQD face off, face off against mix up again in the future. Not only do we have EU versus NA, but then there's kind of like the sub branches of, you know, uh, Seagull streams versus the versus Pluppy streamers. And so uh, fun little rivalries yeah. coming up all in good fun. though. So as course. it stays fun, stream rivalries can get downright vicious over time. Like we're all friends here, like Seagull fans, please love TV. Uh, TV fans, please love Seagull. Don't make it into like a us versus them thing. Please, please, I beg of you. Uh, you're, you're communities asking. have gotten into uh, absolute uh, flame, salt, and destruction over less. I think Twitch Thumbs chat up. in general and the internet overall is a pretty mature community. I'm sure most people are going to be acting like adults. I don't have the same faith in the internet as you do. But it looks like we are about to start soon on Gibraltar uh, in just a moment here. Uh, I think there's a lot of like confirm, confirm. I don't, I'm not, I don't know what's going on. Everyone's just saying the word confirm in chat and we're, we're just rolling with it. Yeah, uh, Doctor, do you concur? I concur. I concur. Are we ready? Swedish, 100% confirmed. Concurred. Okay, it's concur, confirmed. Concur, now, concur. now, it's, now they're absolutely making. It. Yeah, I, I, chat, of course, the stream doesn't know. They just see us saying concur, concur, uh, talking heads, etc. But I don't know. A little bit of uh, fun stuff coming out from both teams. Uh, links, I th <laughs> maybe we're starting. 
Who knows? Maybe. We'll talk a little bit about the game, though. I, um, I mean, early predictions? I mean, I think we kind of know what we I think. I think but... IDDQD is the prediction here, but I do think we have Hanamura and Volskaya in the map pool, so we could see some uh, strangeness for this grand final. Yeah, we're definitely going to see some sniping, and I think the best chance that Flat Earth really has to, uh, you know, break through and take a couple maps is if Lynx plays out of his mind on Sniper, or if they put someone else, and just, someone needs to have the game of their life on Flat Earth to really start taking maps, I think. Uh, they have struggled on payload maps, uh, is something I've noted as well. They've they've done good in closed out series and taken maps from IDDQD on King of the Hill, but their payload game is a little bit off. The coordination isn't quite there on some of the calls, so they're going to have to reverse that today to be able to stand a chance against the yeah. dominant force that has been IDDQD. Yeah, IDDQD has, of course, been very, very strong. I think the attack side's got uh, screwed up here. They might just uh, roll with it anyway. Nope, they're leaving. They're not They're not uh, settling it. Okay, so... Uh, uh, I think we, we might be remaking. Yeah, beta stuff. Beta stuff. I'm not sure. I feel like they want to remake because the sides got messed up. So... What usually happens is that red team is on attack, blue team is on defense, but every now and then... The lobby will just uh, lose its mind, but yeah. And they say Harry just rage crit, and of course they're talking about Umbridgebop, who I was looking at their roster yesterday, and is, is noted as Harry on their roster on the Gosu Gamers page. And I'm like, why doesn't he just go by Harry? It'd be so much easier than calling him Umbridgebop. Like I can't even say that word. He's got another name. Okay, just, they're saying it's live anyway. So okay then, in the uh, quickest uh, production switch ups of all time. Let's see here, Can one you... second. I think we, we we have the technology. Can you confirm? Now we're now we're remaking. Yeah, definitely. Wait, remaking. are we remaking? What? The, the, yeah, but, yeah, we're but remake. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. We're gonna remake. It's like live? No, not live. Whatever. Hey, it wouldn't be so, esports without this type of stuff, you know? Honestly, Overwatch runs incredibly smoothly in terms of uh, switching back and forth. I'm surprised we don't have more problems. To be totally honest. I feel like we've already, you know, done all the promotion and sellout we could possibly do. I don't know if I can even mutter the words Metrino, DX Racer, or Rocket anymore. Clever. Very clever. I do actually, and this is, you know, it's kind of self-promotion in its own way, but I'm really excited about the, the new editors we're adding to the Ghost of Gamers uh, Overwatch content section, mm -hmm. too. So uh, we're kind of revamping and relaunching in a way, too, because we've all been so busy, but now we've got some really interesting editors coming on. Uh, I know Micker has been breaking news, just like finger on the pulse of the scene, knows exactly yep. what roster moves look like and in way out. Faction, of course, is going to come in and write for us, too. Uh, guys, I'm really excited for. Of course, we have our, our remaining editorial staff new editorial leads uh on occasion i will write an article uh not as much as i should but really good stuff so if you guys are liking these tournaments remember that it is kind of brought to you by gosugamers.net uh that pretty much any esport you're into we even brought back our starcraft section uh which you know starcraft is still around now awesome but if you're starcraft into, is still a thing yeah. uh, believe it or not if you're into overwatch gosugamers.net slash overwatch check out the content it's really going to be uh, kicking into overdrive here soon i'm really looking forward to it um as much as i'm looking forward to getting into this game should be in game soon uh both teams are rejoining uh teams are being set back up on the proper sides and good to go here and just <laughs> Hanamura looking threatening in the lobby right now. And oh god, Bromass, you know what? I'm not looking. I'm, I'm not sure what he's linking that. I'm, yeah, no, I'm not. It's, it's something either. on 9 gag. What more do you Yeah, I saw that. I was just like, uh, no. I mean, I, you can't click on it. You have to like manually retype it out. But I'm just going to pass on that, Bromass. Yeah, it's almost St. Patrick's Day, isn't it? Well, no, actually, that's next Thursday. But, uh, you know, I live in Chicago, so the weekend, uh, St. Patrick's Day started yesterday, essentially, for Chicago, as the, the river goes green. And uh, last year, St. Patrick's Day was a little bit nutty, or maybe the year before. The police chief in the blotter described it as the epicenter of nonsense in downtown Chicago for St. Patrick's Day. So stay safe out there for your St. Patrick's Day weekend, folks. Yeah, St. Patrick's Day, it just feels like the holiday. It's like, here's an excuse to drink. Yeah, I it's mean, not, it's, effective, it's effectively the uh, international holiday of getting drunk. It's not even drunk. I mean, there's drunk and then there's St. Patrick's Day. There, It's a whole nother, another level mm -hmm. of it. I mean, just like borderline poisoning death kind of drunk, which is fun to watch from a distance. I'm not, I'm not much do, of a do partaker. Do you think, uh, you know, Torbjorn, uh, maybe I'm just invoking some uh, classic fantasy dwarf uh, stereotypes here, but I feel like Torbjorn enjoys his St. Patrick's Day. Uh, yeah, one would imagine. Yeah, let's let's rank the Overwatch heroes in uh, ability but, to but, get hammered drunk. 
Well, I mean, the thing is for him is that he probably doesn't get hammered. His tolerance is probably so ridiculously high that, you know, he's saying they're laughing as, you know, Tracer is just passed out after one drink. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's probably where Reaper discovered his Death Blossom abilities, spinning in circles with his arms out, really hammered and accidentally holding triggers. And he's like, oh, I accidentally got play of the game there. I guess I'll continue doing that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Puppy uh, saying can't meme in GG chat, so we're getting it in lobby. Ay, 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 ay. So... We're ready. The team's already. We've gotten back in the game. We, we've fixed things. This is going to be map one of our grand finals is IDD QD versus Flat Earth. Here we go, Hex. Arriving at ah, we are actually arriving in Watchpoint Gibraltar. Our long overweight is over. Uh, we are in the grand finals. It is a best of five between Flat Earth and IDD QD. Can Flat Earth steal a map two or three and actually pluck away the finals of our Gosu Gamers EU Weekly? Or is IDD QD going to continue unbeaten for the last month? Uh, IDD QD, they are definitely uh, padding their resume in the very best of ways. Uh, being champions of weekly after weekly, EU, NA, doesn't matter. IDD QD has been just incredibly on point. But take a look here. We have the IDD QD de defense on the way out. They're doing the uh, multiple Lucio just to speed boost their Symmetra out even quicker. It's pretty cool. But look at the things that won't change. We got Coco on Reinhardt, Mendo on the McCree, Pluppy on the Hanzo, uh, spicing it up a bit. Internet Hulk on Lucio, Chipsogen on Mercy, and the Bridge up running things up on the Symmetra. And actually, Internet Hulk switching to the uh, 76 in the end. Yeah, uh, pretty smart switch up. I do like, you know, Coco it works really well as the Reinhardt on, um, you know, providing that shield so Hulk can sit behind and just kind of pit pat away, uh, you know. But we do see the offense, and generally I don't call offenses this early, but I think this is what they're going to run. They're going to run double Zenyatta, Vonathil and crew on the Zenyattas. Lynx and R2 are being their damage healers, are both going to pick up a Genji hero. Dracaeus, they need that support of the shields from the Symmetra. Uh, she's going to buff everyone up with the shields and run offensive teleporters. Then the difference of the composition has really come down to team's personal preference, and it looks like Flat Earth wants to run Bromas on a D.Va. Yep, so take a look here. Pluppy, uh... Goes for the early uh, scatter arrow, not able to connect right away. Is going to get pushed back by D.Va. Bromass being uh, very aggro to start this out. I like it as they uh, move in flat earth. That being said, uh, Artyr can get taken out by Pluppy. So uh, both teams down a player start things out. Lynx, of course, we saw do a lot of work on his Genji versus uh, SG1 last time we saw them. Uh, Internet Hulk will take out Lynx. So both teams really uh, getting uh, damage on each other here. And the payload not moving perhaps as quickly as Flat Earth would like. Yeah, and you don't really want to have to have crew uh, sitting alone on the cart to try to push it. However, I really do like the D.Va hero thing. I think she's great on Gibraltar. She's great at taking high grounds and bullying people out of positions. Yeah, Internet Hulk is going to take out Artyr. Artyr uh, having a little bit of trouble getting things going. Lynx, a little bit more success so far. And here comes the dragon from Pluppy going to zone some people out. Uh, Lynx trying to get some stuff going in the background. And really, Internet Hulk taking out another Genji. Internet Hulk, uh, where has he been on 76? Because he's been doing work this game so far, Hex. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. Commentator's curse. Farewell, unforced error. Uh, I mean, I'm not, maybe the team bumped him, but I think he might have just walked off. I'm not really sure. Uh, I mean, who went on? I, I, I give that 50-50 on a D.Va bump off or not, but it's still a commentator's curse regardless. Rip, Internet Hulk. Yeah, Coco, I mean, uh, gen a, a switch-up that we haven't seen recently. I mean, generally, if they're going to run a Symmetra, they're going to put Internet Hulk on the Symmetra, but now Bridgebub is running this since they're only running solo support with Chipsogen on uh, the Mercy, and they're not running a Lucio. Yeah, and really, this IDD QD defense has been smothering to start out with here. Uh, Flat Earth, it looks like they're getting something uh, good going to begin with, but they have just been stalled, and you don't usually see a team get stalled out at this point. Yeah, so I mean, we do have Lynx here looking for pickoffs. Uh, Bromass did just die a moment ago. Uh, Lynx needs to pick off one or two, and that'll open the way, but easier said than done with how IDD QD has been playing so far, and again, Internet Hulk has been playing out of his mind in terms of dealing with the Genjis and otherwise. Yeah, their best hope really with Flat Earth is being able to we push do have the a, getting picks. Yeah, we had an Earth Shatter come down. Believe from Coco. Coco is going to die. Uh, both teams suffering uh, two kills each, but here comes the Dragon from Pluppy. Pluppy charging up Dragon Strikes over and over again. Actually forces out Defensive Transcendence. So, or sorry, uh, Defensive Transcendence from the offense. So, good stuff there, and really... 
Uh, this has been rough for Flat Earth so far. I really like this IDD QD defense. Yeah, that transcendence being popped is absolutely brutal. You need that to be able to push the cart at some point. You really need to get the momentum going for this composition. We've talked about it so in depth. This composition is fine on paper, but you can get absolutely stalled out and you need something to start breaking that. You need to start hitting uh, headshots if you're linked. You need to get <laughs> Look at the spam here. Look at the, gra the graffiti. Anyways, uh, taking a look at uh, this Pro Mass. Was able to get in the bridge button. The bridge button will be down. Uh, see again flat earth trying to push him mendo though takes out bro mass i just feel like anytime someone has gone down idd qd idd qd has returned in kind with the pick up their own and just made things really rough for flat earth and there it is you know crew kits takes out mendo and the bridge of up takes out crew yeah and just back and forth but not in a way that allows the cart to push up trading with this composition is losing with this composition you need to be stacking one kill two kill three kill and then get going then you get the back line and take advantage of the organiz or disorganization that the defense tries to put up but so far they haven't been able to get more than one kill at a time here yeah well thankfully uh for uh flat earth they were able to get to at least the first checkpoint but look at aaron hulk he has two kills he's looking for a third but no he's gonna get taken out by verkeus i think there's an orb that just sort of slammed into him so again uh, both teams trading out kills by dkd definitely uh <laughs> on the uh winning end of things so far. Yeah, an okay window to try to push in here. They have most of their ultimates up. However, defense has most of their ultimates up as well. I think we're going to have to see a pretty big brawl here. They need to force a fight. Yep, so Lynx uh, with the Widow. Uh, we'll get a pick on that, but Ploppy and Aeronach all combined for three kills together. And now Lynx is one of the only people left. He will pick off Chipsogen, though, so a little bit of life still in it, uh, at least helping up Flat, Flat Earth for the next uh, play. Yeah, we've got Ploppy versus Lynx in a sniper battle up top. One has a gun, one has a bow and arrow. Who will win? It is Ploppy takes out Lynx. Yeah, Ploppy has been on point with the bow and arrow. He's been doing a lot of work. And while the payload is starting to make a little bit of progress, this is just very slow going. And Flat Earth has yet to get a full wipe at IDDQD's expense. Yeah, Bromos is really having trouble. He should be the one in on Coco and taking him out. He's dived him a couple yep. times to no effect and has died himself in, those, in that process. Yeah, and take a look at that. We saw Pluffy again doing a little bit of work. Our tier did go down, and look at that. Nice shots coming up from Mendo. Mendo showing us his McCree chops. Defensive Resurrect is up. And, man, IDDQD just being very, <laughs> very, very difficult to push through. Yeah, this composition should be giving the Reinhardt fits. We've seen Reinhardt's really struggle with it before as everyone is kind of in around him and in behind, and it's troublesome, but they're actually really rallying around this Reinhardt. Chipsogen has had him in his pocket most of the time, alternating between him and Pluppy, and Coco hasn't really struggled the way some Reinhardts have struggled against a Tracer and a Genji composition. Online. This has been a little bit rough. Uh, all in all, and Flat Earth actually starting to run low on time. They need to do something and get this through here. But the thing is, that with IDDQD defending this well at this stage, what's going to happen when we get to the hangar stage, which is usually where teams get gummed up? Yeah, if we get to the hangar oh, stage. Here we go. Floppy with the dragon. What a dragon eats two people. Floppy, uh, the dragon is sated. That is one of the best dragon strikes I think we've ever seen in comp. Nice stuff from Floppy. That being said, Bromass was able to take out Aaron and Hulk, got the teleporter, Bromass. Uh, doing a little bit of work in the back lines, trying to make this happen for Flat Earth, but Pluppy with another kill on our tier, and this is just... Honestly, Pluppy's been doing work on the Hanzo here. Yeah, I mean, Pluppy's just a, such a talented player in as much as he can pick up almost anyone and make them look really good. He wins his one-on-ones. He hasn't had uh, to fight one-on-ones very much so far because because of him hitting shots, uh, getting damage boosted and healed constantly helps a lot too. Yeah, so taking a look at this here, uh, they are coming back up. Uh, Bromass trying to take this much. We'll have to rewind back. Both teams, again, really fighting it out here, as it uh, turns out. But this is sort of the last gasp. And look at that, Mendo Kusai. It was high noon. He got two. Now three picks for Mendo. Mendo cleaning things up as McCree. And again, that uh, Flat Earth going to get pushed back. And they might not even have time for another good push as Mendo gets a fourth just left clicking our tier to death yeah and crew was kind of out of place there as the zenyatta kind of feeling some desperation their offensive teleporter went down too they've got maybe one decent half push in them but they do have both transcendences up the puppy uh d takes out links again links is gonna be down for this last gas push for flat earth so flat earth just has to throw themselves in the point puppy though takes out another Fluffy just really making things incredibly rough, and I'm not even sure they can really do a decent overtime now. Uh, no, they're gonna have to throw bodies to the cart, but I think it's gonna be all in vain. Fluffy with a final five, two pickoffs in the very end. Hanzo, 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 uh, raise your plups as Fluffy making things happen. And Crew had Transcendence up too. He had his Transcendence that might have helped them push towards the last, or towards the second point there too, uh, taken out you know, unmercilessly by an arrow, and man, is Hanzo, is Hanzo back? 
Or is it just Pluppy? I mean, what's what's the I, I, I factor mean, there? Who knows? But let's look at Mendo here. This is Mendo. He, I think he gets a two-person high noon and then just chases people down. It's high, it's high noon. Look, there's the two kills, and then he just comes in, kills the Zen, and then kills the Genji as well. Might, the Genji might not be on there, but believe me when I say, he chased him down and then some. So a nice defense coming out from IDDQD. And now all IDDQD has to do to take map one is simply uh, get to that second checkpoint. Yeah, uh, something that they shouldn't really have difficulties on. We don't see a whole lot of holds happen before that second checkpoint. Um, an impressive defense, too, and there just seemed to be no answers for it. Lynx was getting uh, sporadic kills. Mostly, you can say that offense was sporadic at best. They were getting trades, but they were never getting better and, and good-sided trades. You need to be up one or two heroes and really push your advantage with that composition. They never got going. Yeah. They were never able to get a pulse bomb to really get them over the edge and get them going. The early tank play didn't do much, so adding, you know, that six heroes sometimes can be the catalyst or the spark plug for that composition and we just never saw it get going so take a look at this here as we move forward asking what the time on the first point is uh not sure offhand i do believe in evan here to get in on that but take a look here at the defense yeah link's saying what, <laughs> link's just saying saying what i was thinking All right, uh, so it looks like defensively, though, we're going to see Flat Earth come out with a, with a defensive Widowmaker. Our tier is going to be on it rather than Lynx. Vonethil will play the defensive Symmetra. Uh, Drakaeus will very likely stay on that Reinhardt. Bromas will be the 76 crew on Zenyatta, and he will be tossing his orb to Lynx on the Genji. And we'll see what what the Flat Earth defense does here. I mean, we've seen some great defensive play coming out of Flat Earth. Just as a general rule, I think it's they're going to have their hands full and then some with IDDQD's offense because they have looked phenomenal today. If they give up but the high it's ground, not I think, yeah, if they give up the high ground, I think it's going to be very difficult for them to hold. But they are going to stack the high ground with heroes who excel at it. You know, namely the Widowmaker and the Soldier 76, able to sit behind the shield up here that Drakaeus is going to provide on his Reinhardt and maybe get some picks early on. If at some point they are rushed down, which they will be looking at the composition early from IDDQD and are unable to hold, I think that's going to spell the end of this map. I'm just taking a look at the IDDQD lineup. We got Internet Hulk on the Symmetra, Chips Jin on the Zenyatta, Pluppy on a Genji, Mendo Kusai on a second Genji, Coco on a second Zenyatta, and the Bridge of Bup rounding things out on Reinhardt. And usually the Bridge of Bup we've seen on support, so uh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, Coco is usually the Reinhardt and the Bridge of Bup support, so this is a weird, uh, interesting switch up here. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that he's going to be playing. They're going to add a Reinhardt into this mix rather than a Lucio, which is what they've generally favored in the past. Archer with a quick kill on it. I think they're adding the yep. Reinhardt um, in response to knowing that Flat Earth likes to run hit scan and they're going to hold back with these uh, hit scan characters. So they uh, need that shield up. It's very possible. Uh, both teams are down a player uh, here. Pluppy, though, winning the all important Genji v Genji uh, battle. Start things off. Pluppy uh, having a very, very hot. Uh, series of games today and uh, not slowing down at all. Bromas though takes out Puppy as I said that uh, Comteros curse strikes again. Both teams down two players as this moves forward but the important thing here is that the cart is moving forward for IDDQD. As yeah and that forces Drakaeus off the roof and forces the 76 down too and now they're caught out and, and oh, they're Internet in trouble Hulk down here. The offense again like Internet Hulk finds ways of getting kills on Symmetra in this comp that you wouldn't necessarily expect so Internet Hulk being really really aggressive with this Symmetra play it's beautiful to watch. And uh, now he's gonna, he might take out this Genji. Look at this. Genji running for his life will end up going down the bridge above. And IDDQD is rolling to this first point. Certainly, uh, this is capped faster if they cap it here. But yeah. they'll probably just go to the second point given how things are. And Crew, though, able to take out the Internet Hulk. So a little bit of life from Flat Earth as they go forward here. But they do get that. GG's are being called. There's really not in debate in any way. That is a quicker time for IDDQD. So IDDQD going to go up. Taking Gibraltar, map number one. And then the real question is, Hex, is Flat Earth going to bring things to Hanamura or Volskaya? Uh -huh. um, either one. I, th I think they just can't feel comfortable winning a, you know, uh, a payload map against IDDQD. We saw on Friday they were unable to really make any progress on payload maps, even though IDDQD came out a little bit rusty on King's Row. Uh, but it's not their favorite game mode against these top teams, so they might have better luck on the control points. Yeah, very, very likely. So we're going to move on to map number two. It will be a Flat Earth's choice map, as they did lose. They'll get to choose from any of the remaining four maps in the pool, of which two are Hadamar and Volskaya. So if you uh, love capture points, uh, might see it.
Yeah, I mean, I really like, you know, we, we've talked about this composition that they've been running so much, Double Zen, Double Genji, and then what do you add on the sixth there? I really like that they put the Reinhardt in there, not because, uh, you know, any really strong reason, but it forces them to come down onto the cart to deal with it. So rather than going up to the high ground and trying to bully them off, they just put them on the cart and said, you have to come down and stop this Reinhardt because you have no other way to deal with it. And it forced them out of position and they won that map. Yep. So we're waiting for the reinvite. We will be uh, having the next map f for you soon. And yeah, I mean, if I'm Flight Earth, personally, I bring them the capture points. I mean, let's go. IDDQD is shown to be really strong on payload, but why not bring them to something they might not be as comfortable on? I mean, that being said, we saw what they did to mix up on Volskaya. They ran through with incredible haste, so it's hardly a free win or anything like that. But, you know, catching people off guard, uh, you know, maybe the variance capture points is the way to go for uh, being IDDQD here for Flat Earth. Yeah, I mean, they have to try something a little bit different. They they were able to um, dominate on King of the Hill, and I, I have to wonder if it's IDDQD's weakness or if it's Flat, flat Earth's strength on King of the Hill now that we saw IDDQD struggle uh, against Mixup on King of the Hill. But anything that's going to be out of the comfort zone for IDDQD is going to be in Flat Earth's advantage because putting them um, in standard compositions on payload maps has not worked out for anyone. Anyone. Yeah, and really, uh, IDDQD, look at some of their different... I mean, they have a whole bunch of different comps that they're comfortable on. Obviously, I think the most prolific is the Double Zenyatta Orb comp, where they've just been incredibly aggressive. Uh, it's a changeup, because it used to be uh, Tracer Genji, but now with the changeup from Mendo to... or from Taimu to Mendo, you have this case where I think Taimu is a lot more comfortable on Tracer than Genji, and Mendo is a lot more comfortable on Genji than Tracer, so they just said, hey, let's just do Double Genji, but it's been effective. Yeah, yeah, the double Genji is just brutal to deal with. And yesterday we saw them beat, or Friday we saw them beat, Friday was yesterday. Okay, Friday we saw them beat Flat Earth, uh, mostly just based on their Genji play. And our tier tried to one on one Pluppy a couple different times. Pluppy won every single time. And that's what really turned fights in their favor. And it's not only winning their one on one, it's always the follow up for IDDQD. So they win that trade, but then they take another, then they take another. And so it's when they get their engine really running in that double orb comp that you, it, one, you can't stop it. And two, what do you even try to do to stop it? Everyone's just getting caught up in the back line. So really, the only way to defeat the composition that IDDQD. DDKD likes to run that way is to never let it get going, which is almost impossible. Yep, so it looks like we do have a map choice here. We will not be going to capture points, at least not for map number two, uh, but we will be going to King's Row. So keeping it traditional on payload maps is a uh, flat earth here. But hey, Hex, if this goes five, we would see two capture point maps because you can't undo uh, that pull at that point. Yeah, you can't undo what's, bun, what's done been did. Uh, but King's Row yesterday, we saw Flat Earth play pretty well on King's Row, you know, all things considered against IDDQD. It was the, the closest of the payload maps, at least. Uh, they had a pretty solid defense going on. So I think King's Row, um, even though it's a payload map, is one of the better chances Flat Earth does have of stealing a payload map. Oh, uh, certainly. I mean, King's Row has seen a lot of different things there, but man, IDDQD's defense looked incredible last time we saw them on here. So it's definitely not going to be easy. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we did see Flat Earth able to put up a respectable defense, though. I mean, the games yesterday were pretty, you know, one sided, you know, except for the King of the Hill. Uh, but they did have their best showing on King's Row in the creation esports King of the Watch tournament that we uh, watched yesterday. Um, but yesterday mm -hmm. also just kind of really put me on the IDDQD bandwagon because they made it look absolutely unfair and easy against a team that I think is really good in Flat Earth. So Flat Earth does have a chance at redemption today, uh, but they do have to start doing better on these payload maps. Otherwise, they don't stand a chance. Yeah, I mean, Flat Earth, they're a team that really has big flashes of playing really, really well. But I feel like IDDQD just has this like ridiculous level of just insane consistency that's hard for teams to crack. Yeah, their consistent their consistent dual wins are really what stands out to me, and I, and like I fall to victim as as everyone else does of looking at the flashy plays. But Mendo and Pluppy, when when you're gonna play this style, if you have your Genjis out on the edge with orbs and they're losing one on ones, you're gonna get absolutely rolled. You're never gonna get it started. You can't defend that way. You can't offend that way. But when you have them out on the uh, out on the flanks, picking off and isolating targets and winning their one on ones constantly, then you just start rolling and no one's there to stop them. You've got supports in the back. You've got super aggressive teleporters. It's just a phenomenal machine in motion to watch um, unless you're trying to defend against it. Now, what you mentioned with Flat Earth is really important too because any one of these players, if they start playing out of their minds, like a Lynx or Archie or Vonathil as well, capable of it too. Crew, we've seen play offensive Widowmaker to, to a great extent, but they need to be playing at their best to stand a chance against IDDQD. 
Yep, uh, looking at IDDQD as I come out here. Uh, well, wait a second there. Uh, let's take a look at this uh, beauty here. So we're going to take a look at Internet Hulk once he's up. Watch him get speed boosted by all three Lucios. This is a very, very fast rollout, but it makes a lot of sense for getting all six turrets out right away. So watch how long a Symmetra speed boosted here. This is beautiful. So cool. Such a cool strat. I'm only getting two... Uh, no, he got a three, it's just we didn't hear the other amp up. But uh, anyways, uh, take a look at the full defense as it takes shape. We have Internet Hulk on the Symmetra, uh, Chips Gen on the Zenyatta, Mendo on the McCree, Pluppy on Junkrat, Coco on Reinhardt, and the Bridge of Up rounding things out on the Lucio. Yeah, offensively, it looks like they're going to go a little bit more standard. They're going to run Jukaeus on Reinhardt. Lynx is going to be playing a Pharah. Uh, he will be accompanied by Vonifil on Mercy. Artier will play McCree, Crew on Lucio, and Romas on 76. And just those little things, like you mentioned, like the speed boost to get her to the front is really, they're, they're starting to become so important on, on maps like this because, look, she's going to have six sentries up right through this gate. And this six sentries has crushed a single tank who rolls through. Uh, with the Reinhardt shield, Reinhardt is not good at taking out sentries. He's too slow to do it, and drop a shield so a really cool setup all you know coming from that lucio speed burst yep. so uh we see uh what's it called pluppy on the standard junk rat uh, we saw him use this a great effect he was actually the ferris slayer last time we saw him in king's row and chip jen takes out your real quickly and those turrets did a lot of work as your tried to get in there hex yeah, and those turrets, I mean, they're standard spot, they're set up in there, and like I said, Reinhardt can't deal with those turrets at all. He needs someone behind him to help deal with it, but that's a, a very aggressive defensive hold, and that's why Symmetra is so strong in this map. Yeah, really good stuff uh, so far, and the, they are just keeping Flat Earth back. Combination of spam and uh, high pressure. Taking a look here at Mendo. Mendo fanning the hammer, getting in, getting good damage on Reinhardt. Coco with the double kill, swinging the hammer, uh, gets two for his trouble. Now two people for the Flat Earth offense are down. Coco with a triple kill in the end, and Mendo rounding out a fourth kill, and... Just like that, uh, Flat Earth gonna have to go back to the drawing board here. Hex. Their composition is playing right into the hands of IDDQD. They're splitting up, so they've got yeah, squadron yeah. running. So they're running Lynx and Vonathil with a Pharaoh Mercy to one side, and then that leaves the four others other side. And really what IDDQ excels at is winning small skirmishes around the map. You're playing right into their strength. Absolutely. So we see now uh, both Reinhardt's uh, facing off. Oh no, they caught. So he called for the flashbang over the shield for an earth shatter, but the flashbang didn't hit, so the earth shatter totally whiffed. And that's a this is a really good opportunity now for uh, Flat Earth. Yeah, Lynx was able to come in and get a couple kills too. Damage boost, and now they're putting really good presence on here. The teleporter is up, and no one seems to see it. McCree's coming through. Junkrat's coming through. And then we do see a dead eye coming out from the defense. Mendo trying to save this. People are streaming back in from the teleporter. But that was a great capitalization here by uh, Flat Earth off of what was definitely uh, it was great communication teamwork by IDDQD. It's just he didn't hit the flashbang. So to explain that play more in detail, basically Reinh or McCree can stop Reinhardt from holding up the shield. You throw the flashbang over the shield, he gets stunned, it's gone. But there's a delay in Earth Shatter, so you need to call and go, hey, I'm flashbanging. And then the Reinhardt Earth Shatters at around the time where he thinks the shield is going to go down because it's a short duration. But because the flashbang didn't hit, Earth Shatter was wasted and everything just went terribly for IDDQD there. Yeah, it's one of those small, you know, plays that can only be determined within seconds, not working out for IDDQD. They're actually flashes yesterday's Kings Row where they looked a little bit discoordinated. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, that was, I love that stuff for IDDQD. I mean, execution wise, it didn't work out by the slimmest margins, but that was cool. I loved uh, what I saw there. So we do see the defensive sound bear coming out. Uh, IDDQD rushing in again. No one has died just yet. Uh, some decent uh, play there from Flat Earth, but look at Pluppy. Pluppy's in the back. He's flanking. He's already taken out one as Farah. He's taken out two. He's looking for the triple. Will he get Vonathil? He does get Vonathil in the end. So Pluppy really on fire. Good positioning there, and Flat Earth again, going to be sent back to spawn. Yeah, Pluffy's one of those players that no matter what hero he's on, you have to account for him. He's erupted up as Genji, as Reaper, as uh, Hanzo now on Pharah. Uh, just you have to account for just the pluffness of IDDQD. Yeah, so IDDQD, they are solidifying here on the defense. They're making the streets hard. We do have the offensive sound bear coming in. In comes a Flat Earth. They're trying to make this happen. Defensive Transcends is out, trying to side me this. Uh, Mendo, though, gets the kill. Pluffy with the kill. Justice reigns from above. A double kill for Pluffy. Justice reigns from a blow from Lynx. Not quite as effective as Justice from above. And now uh, Crew again get taken out as Space Frog. Shout out to Space Frog. Why, why not? 
All right, so offensive here, they have a couple of nice setups here. They, they've got uh, both their Earth Shatter and Deadeye, which can combo really well together. And then if all goes awry, they do have Resurrection up and available as well. Although R2 getting takeout early is going to slow down this push. Yeah, our tier is a big part of the Flat Earth uh, team just in general. Anytime he goes down, it's bad. Lynx has to go full forward. Gets taken up by Mendo Kusai with the assist from Zenyatta. And now Mendo uh, on the hunt. Pluffy on the hunt. Mendo with another kill. And Flat Earth is going to have to go back yet again. Three kills for Mendo. Yeah, I think he this is... He's making the McCree work right This now. is really important for Mendo uh, just to be able to make McCree work. You know, Taimu definitely excelled at McCree. And we always thought they were definitely giving up a, a great McCree when they did go for Mendo. But Mendo really proving his worth as the cowboy right now he's sneaking behind he is sneaking behind mendo's been doing a lot of cool stuff here and oh man he wants a dead eye look at this his dead eye is up bromass oh he might first. get bromass first he takes out bromass and now he is perfectly set up the dead eye is down it is high noon but link saying maybe it's not but you know what while they're focusing on him floppy beast from the back gets a triple kill and this is just good stuff coming up from IDD QD. Yeah, this is a brutal hole of the streets right now, and not, not a whole lot that Flat Earth seems to be able to do about it. Now, they do have this combo up, but it's a matter of being able to hit that Earth Shadow, comboing with the High Noon, a lot of moving parts. Link's now on Sniper. They're speeding up, up Flat Earth, wants to make something happen now. Drakeus goes in, takes out Coco. Drakeus dies in the process. Both Reinhardts are down. Mendo and Chips is in, trading off on kills here. And IDD, or Flat Earth, trying to make it happen, and with the extra pick from Lynx, they might just have this, but Pluppy reigns from above. Uh, will still be alive here and really saving this point for IDDQD when the, that was otherwise looking pretty good for Flat Earth. Yeah, that fight went on so long. It really started with actually Lynx picking, uh, picking Pluppy out of the skies there and then opening it up. So Lynx got a couple more kills, but if that fight went on so long that Pluppy was able to get back in the mix and stall that out. However, it's the most progress we've seen out of Flat Earth in a bit. Yeah, Flat Earth still make things happen. Bromass is able to take out Coco. Flat Earth going a slightly different approach this time, not going up the gut, instead going up the side. Bromass, though, uh, maybe not getting that memo, is going to get taken out by Mendo. Uh, as he was sort of on the flank, chips him with the defensive transcendence. But hey, RTR with a pair of kills. Dracaeus with a kill. A snipe out there. So here comes Flat Earth, finally uh, getting through some of this incredibly sticky defense of IDDQD. Yeah, Archer with a really cool play that's went uh, unnoticed on the flank. Apparently IDDQD did not clear their flanks while they were moving out through the streets and he got behind them with a high noon able to get down two and that was enough to really spur them to be able to capture this point. Beautiful play by Archer. Yeah, nice stuff from Bartier, nice stuff from Lynx, and We're gonna have a now uh, Flat Earth with a little bit of life, and they could potentially end this, and yes, we have Pluppy on the, the Widow here, and it's going to be Lynx versus the the one and only Plupster, and we're going to see how this works out. Uh, <laughs> it's a, Pluppy uh, being a little bit evasive there, and now taking a look at this, we have the defense rushing in, but Crew able to take out Internet Hulk, Lynx takes out Mendo, that's two down for IDDQD, and Flat Earth, they sense blood and water, and they are moving forward, Hex. Archer that eventually takes on Coco, so there goes their tank, and this Pluppy just oh, look at the back trying to get picked. Will he get Pluppy? What? Pluppy under siege. Pluppy has a window behind him, and yes, the Lucio will take out Pluppy. And this is really good stuff from Flat Earth. Flat Earth is in hot pursuit. Down goes the Lucio. It's just all red everywhere as Flat Earth suddenly making things happen. Earthshot comes down, the kills in Yada. No transcendent stall here, and Flat Earth uh, just surging out of nowhere to finish out King's Row. On the back of R-Tier and Lynx actually playing really well. R-Tier, of course, I think that, that high noon that he got off in the back lines because they didn't clear their flanks was absolutely game-breaking. Took down two, they would get that point, and from there, they never stopped pushing. So, experience some tranquility as they were, and uh, Pluppy, justice reigns from above. He did this all game. There's a justice rating from below. It wasn't quite as effective. Link's enjoying it though. So a time of 7.07, uh, middle time, not the fastest, not the <laughs> slowest, but uh, pretty good. Link's calling out his NA alt. Yeah, yeah. What, you know, the thing is like, now I feel like even though NA can do really great alts in games, I just feel like NA alt is just synonymous with bad play. I think it, it started in like League or something. I don't know, but yeah, it's okay. And NA, you know, we have enough self-confidence that these, these petty little insults won't hurt us. You know, why can't it be EU alt when something goes bad? Why? Anyways, we are uh, 
That was pretty good from Flat Earth, though. I mean, no, they, they, they were able, nice. able to finish against a very strong IDDQD defense. Seven minutes is not a bad time, so they're going to have to step it up on defense, and they could steal King's Row here. They looked pretty good. They got their coordination done well, and then if they get that top-tier play out of our tier, um, I, I mentioned someone's going to have to play really well, better than they normally play, to be able to steal a, a payload map from IDDQD, and right there, it was our tier. He was assisted, actually, getting in the flanks by Crew, too. They speed burst into the side. Uh, using the speed as Lucio has become a important factor in these plays so we're gonna see if they Absolutely. can actually hold on for seven minutes and steal a map well IDQ. that's why one of those things i feel like uh, people wonder about lucy i think lucio is always going to have a strong role in the meta so long as speed boost is a thing i feel like other supports maybe need a way of speed boosting to some extent because the speed boost is so vital that i just feel like you're gonna see lucio from now until the end of time until some other hero has a way of you know speeding you in uh, yeah, I mean, the support uh, pool right now is, you know, could use a, a couple additions here or there, something different. Um, you know, Lucio definitely has been absolutely a staple in the meta. One of the only heroes to almost never fall out of the meta completely uh, has been Lucio. So, go ahead. I was going to say, taking a look at yeah. the defense coming out now from Flat Earth. We got Bromass on the Junkrat, Crew on Lucio, Verkaeus on Reinhardt, Artyr on the McCree, Vonathil on the Symmetra and Lynx rounding it out as Widow. So interesting defense coming out here and let's see if Lynx can get some more picks. Yeah, uh, we are going to see the Hanzo strat at the start though. Uh, the shield should be up for Dukeus. I'm surprised they're not all hiding in the corner like Mixup was. Uh, but definitely Hanzo is coming out. He's going to get speed burst. So we've seen this work and actually have a pretty big impact on the game. So the fact they're not taking it super seriously worries me a little bit. Yep, uh, no, the, it's a big deal. It's not random if it least. always works So sometimes. the timer is going. Will the Hanzos get pickoffs? It's not random. I love Coco's Conte. They actually still have one scatter shot. But nah, they're, they're so yeah, they did take uh, it seriously. No, no, no poor support was taken out this day, uh, Hex. No, they huddled in the corner over the pack and then put a shield over the pack, making a, an impromptu bomb shelter, if you will. Yep. So, take a look here. Pluppy is on the Farah, and uh, we've seen Pluppy do some work, uh, both on the defensive end and on the offensive end today with Farah. I mean, Pluppy just a very versatile player in general. We'll see uh, what he does here. He is getting that Mercy damage boost, but Pro Pass takes out Mendo. Mendo runs a Valve with Junkrat Bomb, so that's gonna be first blood to Flat Earth, and they're down a very vital McCree. Yeah, Pro Mass being able to control this top left side is really important. He does get knocked down now, and he's gonna try to take a different vantage point. Misses his so jump, Pluppy but... got killed there, but did you see that mid-air shot on Junkrat? That is sick. Oh, that's what must have screwed up his uh, mobility jump that I was looking at there. But Lynx does take down Pluppy. R tier then takes down Internet Hawk. So some good DM on the side of Flat Earth so far. Yeah, Flat Earth, I mean, their defense is very, very solid. And uh, and hang on, we got to switch up. We got Pluppy now and Widow. He takes out Lynx. Sniper on sniper action here as Widowmaker uh, sends his blood in the water. And she is going forward. So let's see what Pluppy now does here. That being said, there's fire in the hole. Here comes a tire from Bromas. It's going to die. I think it might have gotten sniped. I'm not sure. But... Uh, no Junkrat value here, even with 150 HP. Taking the fight here comes the uh, Flat Earth defense. They're charging in, but uh, not as much value as they want. Bromas takes up Mendo. Uh, crew, really, uh, it's back and forth here, but it does look like Flat Earth is getting the edge. Yeah, Bromas really picking it up. Takes down Pluppy towards the end there, too. Pluppy had a really nice window right after he took out Lynx. When you're a sniper and you take out the opposing sniper, you're just feasting and duck hunting. But Flat Earth was able to sustain through that. They have the teleporter up and a couple ultimates on their side as well. Good defense so yeah. far. No one. Yeah, defense-wise, they do have an Earth Shadow that just came from the Drakeus. Coco has an Earth Shadow as well. Reinhardt's could be deciding this next fight. Both teams still at full strength. Speed boosts are out. A little bit of positioning war back and forth. Arts here, though, takes out Mendo Kusai. That's a big pick for the defense. Here comes the offensive sound bear. They're going in. Reinhardt getting charged away from the fight. Uh, and the bridge above with two kills is Lucio Puppy uh, making a third. And here comes IDDQD almost off the... <laughs> Man, the bridge above Lucio has been awesome. Yeah, Our tier did take out Mendo uh, early in that yep. fight, but it cost him his entire ultimate to take down one hero. Not exactly the value you want to get out of that. That is going to allow them to move in. Our tier is still here, though. He doesn't want to give this up just yet, but he might have to. He's not able to get on the point in time. Reinhardt zones him out. Mendo with the high noon and takes out three people. People did not Ooh. get the time alert. Lynx, though, uh, two kills on the Widow side. Able to keep it going. And we have the bridge above versus the Lynx. Who's going to win here? Widow just got served, yep. as Lucia would say. <laughs> I got watching the bridge about four. He gets kill after kill on Lucio, even after the nerf. Uh, they might have nerfed Lucio, but they certainly did not nerf in the bridge above. There's definitely a space for Lucio to be more involved in fights. I actually see it a lot in pubs where Lucios are going absolutely crazy, trying to work on their Lucio game. He's such a versatile hero. He's got a full and uh, wonderful kit, and not a lot of people use it to its full capacity. Meanwhile, uh, this is not enough for Flatter. Flatter 
needs to get several wipes in the streets here. They need to stall out IDD QD for longer. If they just go through the streets without a uh, fail, it might not be bad. But that being said, three kills now. Uh, the payload is still moving, which is the disheartening thing. But three kills, four flat earth as they move forward. They're speed boosting forward and they want to clean this up and uh, the bridge up. Just gonna exit to the run now. He's gonna get help to his spawn by a uh, rocket to the back. Uh, rip the Nabridge up. It's really so, smart to chase, especially someone like Lucio. It really kind of stalls out the push, and Arts here and Lynx are carrying this team on their back right now with kill after kill. Of course, being supported by everyone on their team, but like they're the ones showing up in the kill feed. Arts here is playing out of his mind. Yeah, Bromass doing a lot of work here. Arts here doing a lot of work. This is good defense going from Flat Earth. Right now, IDDQD has 3 minutes, 24 seconds, so uh, defensive sound barrier is out. Earth Shatter is down, though. Nice Earth Shatter coming up from Coco. Uh, Bromass uh, getting a kill. Both teams losing people. Both teams down two people. The res, though, comes down from Chipsogen, and this could tear things to IDDQD's side, but look at Arts here. Arts here gets two kills of his own. Mendo finally takes out Arts here, but... I think the overall momentum is in IDDQD's favor. Yeah, the res did miss the Lucio, though, so that is going to be a key component that they're missing on this push. Uh, Mendo does take out your Chaos crew, Fluffy, and now they have the high noon up. Yeah, yeah. That is out. Uh, crew able to take out Pluppy in the end. So Crew saying, hey, uh, Nabridge up. You're going to kill some people. I'm going to kill some people. Yeah, here comes Nabridge up. Now he does have a sound barrier up that should be allow them to push his point. But they full defense ready. And that teleporter is so close to uh, you the know, teleporter is doing work. Hit. And look at this uh, very aggressive Lucio ing by Crew. Crew just trying to keep the point contested. He's doing that as we speak. Arctur and Bromass getting a kill each. Vaudeville getting a kill. That's three down now for IDDQD. Res comes up from Chimchin. And Chimchin is going to bite it as a result. But the momentum now all in flight favor as they are rushing down IDDQD and buying themselves an immense amount of time. Now IDDQD only with a little over two minutes left text. That teleporter is absolutely huge. It might as well have been a 12 on 6 with the amount of uh, reinforcements they were getting funneled through there. Just a beautiful and aggressive push of their teleporter there allowed them to stop them from even getting the second point. And I've been gushing over today in general, but the Lucio play in this game has been so, so good. It's been amazing, Hex. I really love seeing both what the Bridge Bup and Crew have been doing so far. That being said, we're taking a look at Lynx. Lynx is staying up for the Reaper flank, and we've seen this do a lot of work today. Yeah, uh, this is why you want to you wanna clear your tops and make sure that everything is fine going on your way out if you decide to push out. Conversely, you can do what Flight Earth is doing, which is kind of wait um, you know, beyond the flanks. Yep, Aaron and Hulk is able to take out Vonnefil uh, quickly. Uh, both teams losing a player early in this fight. And here comes the tire from Mendo Kusai. That's going to be the difference maker, as now IDDQD Firmly in the driver's seat. Another tire coming out from Bromass, but not going to get the same level value. Bromass himself goes down. Uh, an Earth Shadow comes down, not doing a whole lot. And here comes IDDQD. They are going to get this point now, I believe. But time-wise, Flat Earth has bought themselves a lot of time. They have to hold for a minute 15 longer. Yeah, that is not bad. But we're going to see a very aggressive push come through here. Mendo on Junkrat is going to take the high ground immediately. They are all on, on this high ground. Yeah. They're on the high ground. They, they know they don't have that much time. They need to make this count and really uh, take a look at Lynx there. Lynx has a Death Blossom. He can get a good Death Blossom. It might be the nail in the coffin for IDDQD here. Uh, looking at Lynx. Lynx is saying things up. He is looking. He's going to drop down. In comes a Death Blossom from Lynx. Lynx doing damage. Arts here with the follow up. That's four dead now. And Mercy is one of the ones who died. There will be no res. as a full team wipe for Flat Earth. And now IDDQD might not have enough time. They have probably one push left and they're going to need to make it the push of their lives, Hex. Some of the best team defense I've seen in a while. Not only did Lynx drop down from the Death Blossom, but allow him to do that was killing the Lucio first. A Death Blossom into a Sound Barrier team is worthless. At that time, they didn't have it up. Here comes the Sound Barrier now, though. The Sound Barrier, offensive Sound Barrier is up. This is now do or die time for IDDQD. They have two kills so far. They're rushing in. <laughs> Winston is going crazy. Puppy is going crazy. IDDQD, only 15 seconds left. They need to move, Hex. The tire comes in. The, all the momentum is IDDQD's way, but look at the payload. I don't think they're going to make it. No, that card does take some time to push. Your pace is going to do his best just to stay alive. He launches himself off the cliff. And that is it. There, GG is saying, Crew saying GG uh, very quickly there. So, Flat Earth not going down without a fight. They even up the series one to one, and we are going to be going to map three. And I believe that guarantees us at least Volskaya or Hanamura here, Hex. So, we're in for a good one. Yeah, I mean... The, the way to beat IDDQD, and we've seen it from Mixup, and now we're seeing it from Flat Earth, is to make uh, perfect plays right off of uh, off of the picks that you're getting. So it's been that intelligent play. That Death Blossom does absolutely nothing if a bridge buff is alive. They killed him first, then they dropped in the Death Blossom so that team isn't sound barriered. Lynx is going to get all the credit, but the pick on a bridge buff set this up right here. Yeah, no, it was really uh, good stuff all in, all in general. But of course, we saw that Death Blossom as it came down, did a lot of work. And that was effectively the nail in the coffin. That was how Flat Earth was able to secure the game. And even though IDDQD came back roaring, it was too late. Time had expired. 
and Flat Earth showing that they have what it takes as the C our grand finals is now evened up one to one. Yeah, Flat Earth uh, showing that they can definitely compete with IDDQD and uh, not only on King of the Hill or not only on Control Point or some kind of, you know, a little goofier or cheesier setup. They just went on st King's Row standard play um, and just beat the heck out of IDDQD. I'm almost in awe right now, but it's really, they just played mm -hmm. so smart and Artier played out of his mind, but it's recognizing those brief moments when uh, you're going to get the most value out of your ultimates. That, that uh, Death Blossom there, just a great example of it too. Yeah, and I can't wait to see what comes up from game three. And I'm still I'm still laughing at the map pool hacks because we have such greatness in store for us. Right. Uh, Although uh, I still wish one of the maps was Ilios. I mean, can you imagine if we went to a game five Ilios? That would just be the absolute best. Maybe we'll draw on some of it and then our admins will force a King of the Hill grand finals on Ilios. It's possible still, I think. I don't know how the admins are running things, but uh, I don't think we can scoot we, that way. But we're going to Hollywood. Hollywood is the IDDQD choice. Uh, of course, this is a map that IDDQD is kind of known for. They have a lot of great things that they do on this map. A lot of uh, things in their favor. I mean, their point A defense on this map alone is really, really good. And it looks like we are side swapping as well, as IDDQD will be on the attack first this time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Flat Earth has to do with it. But Flat Earth didn't really have to bust out any kind of different comps. They just got better play out of their team, uh, you know, on defense of the last round, especially Bromos went insane on Junkrat, played really well. They seem to work together as a team really smart, even towards that last push when IDDQD was stacking the high ground and looking to get really aggressive. They sent Lynx right up there immediately. They didn't send anyone past that point because they knew that's where the uh, offense was coming from. They took back mm -hmm. that high ground and then dropped into that Death Blossom. Their communication and everything seems on point and their players are playing really well right now i'm starting to really like flat earth's chances in this set yeah i mean flat earth uh, they brought it to iddqd and we're all even here uh, any team can take it we are effectively in a best of three now both teams showing us some good stuff uh, they're asking for ready casters are ready Let's get into some Hollywood, Hex. I could not be more ready. Uh, Hollywood has been one of my favorite maps for a while because, you know, even if it's a nice day out, I got to curtain up the windows and everything and start casting. So it's nice to see some sunshine, even if it's on a screen. Yeah, I had curtains up, but uh, in doing some stuff in between games, I'm a klutz. I knock things over. It's terrible. For those who are wondering why the light is shining in. Uh, there you go. That is my story. Yeah, light but we are in here. We are in. This is IDDQD versus Flat Earth. It is uh, the score is one to one. And who knows who's going to take this series because both teams will show us some really good stuff thus far. Yeah, uh, you know, as, as good as mix up and ID in IDDQD was as a set. And it's something that I imagine we'll see in the future. We saw this Friday and we thought it was, you know, fun to watch. IDDQD definitely came out the winners there, but Flat Earth showed enough that it made us excited to see what was going on. And then Flat Earth <laughs> being able to take out Reunited in the bottom of the bracket here. Uh, yeah, I've really kind of, you know, they've shown up the last couple weeks. We had inklings of them being good. They were able to be G2 and SG1 earlier in different tournaments. But now they're, they're ready to take the next step and taking maps off of IDQ is the first step of that. Being able to be the first team to defeat IDDQD really puts them in a different level. So taking a look at the Flat Earth defense as it comes out here, we got Drakaeus on the Reinhardt, destroying every railing in his sight. He is quite good at that. Uh, Lynx on the Tracer, Vonifil on Symmetra, Artier on the McCree, Crew on the Lucio, and Bromas rounding things out on 76. And we do have the kind of double orb composition. Of course, we're still looking for your ideas on what to call this composition. Double Zen, orbital, and momentum composition. I don't know, something more creative than I'm able to come up with, but that is IDDQD. They're going to run Coco and Chipsogen on Zenyatta. Uh, Pluppy is going to be playing Genji. Mendo, actually, little switch ups, going to play Tracer. Uh, Internet Hulk, of course, on Symmetra offensively. And Nabrigibuff, who else but Lucio? Yeah, and uh, the really cool thing about this uh, double orb comp coming out from IDDQD is that it doesn't get stalled out as much on the streets phase as Hollywood, but it does have to get through the first phase, and let's just see how Flat Earth defends. Uh, the Symmetra orb actually getting reflected. Uh, cool stuff there coming out of Fluffy and Fluffy. He is in, and he is already applying pressure. Yeah, already takes the high ground, takes on some of the Symmetra Terrors. Mendo's also in with him, too, and it's just like where you have to track them and have to follow them while the rest of the team's going to be steadily pushing in. Yeah, and uh, IDDQD... Uh, wait, why are they saying remake? Vocal crash? Uh, Coco Crash, they're saying they need a remake. Uh, this is up to, as far as this goes, this is up to Flat Earth uh, if they want a remake or not. This is not, uh, like that's just how it goes. Yeah, it's pretty much uh, how it goes. Hopefully that we get it all sorted out. Um... Right now we're just waiting for uh, Flat Earth. Coco is not in the game, so 
They're saying we can remake uh, Flat Earth being great sportsmen here, so we are going to remake this. Coco crashing out, and <laughs> it's like remake. It's the right thing to do. It really, I mean, it give happens. it up, guys. Give it up to Flat Earth there because there's no like weird rule controversy. They're just like, hey, let's remake. They were not obligated to do that, and they would have been in their rights not to remake, but. You know, cool stuff going out from them, keeping the peace, and we're just going to remake this. I mean, I would have been kind of tempted if I'm Flat Earth to take any advantage I can over IDDQD. No one will remember well, six that, months that, from that, now. That's, that's you, Hex. I, I said I would have been tempted, not that I would have done it, but it happened so early, too, that it's just absolutely the right thing to do to remake. I mean, if you're halfway through and you've done a really good defense, then it becomes more difficult to be like, yes. oh, we're going to do that again. But first, it was 10 only seconds, one run, yeah. so. So we'll be uh, back in shortly. Shouldn't take too long to get things set up yet again. This is, of course, the Ghost of Gamers Overwatch Weekly. This is our grand finals. We are in map number three, uh, Flat Earth and IDD QD, or IDD QD in a very, very close set thus far. Both teams, one game each, and this has been exciting, X. Yeah, and uh, the Match Arena page is still open. If you'd like to donate for free or $1, use GGEU2 uh, is the code, GGEU2. And if you want to toss some money on top, that was wonderful. That goes right to the players in the prize pool. Right now, we're oh, at 535, fact. thanks to a donation by Bagelberry. Doesn't say anything. A man of few words in a rainbow avatar. Bagelberry tosses 10 bucks. No, no, no. It's not just a rainbow avatar, Hex. Oh, you need it? to properly identify. I it's a slowpoke Pokemon with a rainbow that's it has even more style so big thanks to bagelberry bagelberry one of our top five donators on the day thank you for uh, helping make this prize pool even more awesome for the players involved and i gotta tell you flat earth and idd QD are putting on a show for you guys as we speak yeah we all know my my pokemon uh you know vocabulary isn't up there how do you Is not know that the original I know 151 i know slowpoke i know slowpoke okay. from like 4chan posts but i don't is that it doesn't look well, like slowpoke that, Wow, what is your gamer cred? I know Slowpoke from 4chan. I do, I'm Tom. Well, I'm, How did you not live cred, with man. everyone I mean, else and capture all 151? In fact, I'm actually more into the lore because I am Slowpoke. I'm role-playing as Slowpoke because I clearly am not caught up on any of this. I'm, is that, I'm not sure that's Slowpoke, really. Uh, yeah, I'm just being honest. I never played Pokemon. Sorry, I didn't. I, I, Played outside a lot. Not only did I, I went to you know a Pokemon a tour event at Mall of America back in the day. I got I went to a Nintendo event and got Mew loaded directly into my Game Boy. I mean, it was just a thing. And that thing said I never really got too much in the trading cards. Uh, I think that was mostly because my parents uh, rightly saw it and said, "Hey, we're not actually going to be letting you spend this much money on Pokemon trading cards." So, parents kind of nipped that one in the bud. But as far as the video game went, I was totally into it. Yeah, n not me. Sorry. I, I don't know. I I shot things with BB guns and I played outside in the mud a lot. So it was my upbringing. I don't know. What are you doing here casting a stream with me? Why aren't you out there, you know, doing more manly things? Well, because like, now know. I live in like the urban landscape, so there's nothing to really shoot at or, or hunt with or you do anything. You can't slaughter here. defenseless animals? That's what? <laughs> no, if I go to the park and slaughter defenseless animals, uh, those are called humans and I will get in trouble for it. Uh, but, you know. I, yeah, I mean, that's the world we live in. It is nice outdoorsy here. Chicago's a beautiful park system. I live right by the river and there's a nice park. I might go for a little run later or something, but uh, no Pokemon will be involved in that jog either. I don't know. I feel yeah. like I'm missing out, but now it's like way too late to go back on a Pokemon and like get into it again. Well, you know, the fight, the Pokemon anime is still going uh, somehow. Yes. I'm not really sure how. I mean, how is at this point, Ash might be the just the most pathetic Pokemon trainer of all. I mean, you've had how many seasons? He just throws away his high level Pokemon, goes for new ones like just become the master already, man. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, I, I know enough Pokemon to keep me in, in memes. That's about it. Uh, I, I don't know any any of the lore and whatnot. But, uh, you know, stuff still makes me laugh. It still makes me chuckle. Yep. So we are waiting here. Uh, casters are ready. Uh, map is getting changed to Hollywood. For a second, I thought we were going to go to Ilios, and that would have been uh, something special. But uh, now nah, we're going to Hollywood. Okay. I mean, Hopefully I would have no, no been down for the surprise. I had some really, really strange stuff happen, like loading in, like it loads up the screen halfway, it loads up an invite, and then, I don't know, it's been, it's been iffy, I'll say that much, it's been iffy. Yep, so, we are in here, and now, I'm gonna take a look again, it's going to be, of course, IDDQD on the attack, uh, Flat Earth on the defense, and let's just see if uh, Flat Earth has any new wrinkles for us on the defense, or if it's just simply a replay as oh, before. Come on. Oh no, Coco crashed again. 
Maybe, All right, we're going to wait and see if Coco can get back in here. Coco right now, you know, maybe it's in Yada Karma, maybe not, but we're waiting for him to get back. This is like forfeit? <laughs> well then. Have you tried turning it on and off again? Uh, can you turn off your modem for 45 seconds and plug it back in? Yeah, I love the early tiers of tech support when they have to ask you if they, it's actually plugged into the wall. You know, they're just following their flow chart, but it's a yes, just But, take, you take know, the flow 10. chart is good because think about how many people didn't have it plugged into their wall. I, I, okay, I, they're I, saying live for now, Coco is back. So, looking at the defense of Flat Earth, we got Tracer, or Lynx on the Tracer, Artier on the McCree, Verkaeus on Reinhardt, Vonathil on Symmetra, Crew on Lucio, and Bromas rounding it out on Soldier 76. Well, it would appear offensively we're kind of still in the same composition. We're going to have Chipsogen and Coco running Zenyatta in the, the heart of the double orb. Pluppy is going to take one of those orbs as Genji. Mendo will take the other as Tracer. Nibrijibup will play Lucio, keep everyone a little bit healthy. And of course, giving everyone an extra 50 HP is Internet Hulk on Symmetra. So we'll see how all this works. The double orb comp has been very, very effective in the past. And now we'll just see how the Flight Earth defense is going to deal with it. And I like the defensive Tracer that's going out here, X. Yeah, it definitely um, is going to pull them back to at least kind of throw the pressure off a little bit. Hopefully, he wants the back his, lines. He wants his Zenyatas. That's what he wants. Lynx yeah. has Zenyatas in his sights, and I think he might be getting on one very, very shortly here. He has Coco. He's looking for Coco, the man who cannot stay connected. Uh, he's going to have to back out, though. So Coco being evasive and really just making Lynx think twice about it. And Lynx going to have to back out. Yeah, at the very least, it pulls the Zenyatas back, not able to really support the front line, at least with any damage of their own. But both of the orbs are in, and Mendo and Pluppy going to town right now. Yeah, they're in. For KSO, able to take out Mendo. Mendo getting taken out as Tracer. He is not a double Genji. Uh, nice deflect coming out from Pluppy. Both teams down a player as we go forward here. Uh, Lynx died this Internet Hulk in the back, but anytime the Tracer dies in the back, the Tracer is still offering a lot of delays. So, yeah, and of course, I mean, yeah, Lynx died, but think about the attention he grabbed in the process. One of the patches that did come through is now the orbs do not stack, so you cannot double Discord, nor can you double Harmony someone. If you see the two balloons over the head, it's only having one effect. I'm taking a look here. They are taking out the teleporter. Pluppy takes out Bonnethil's teleporter, and Pluppy again being a pest. Lots of long range damage. Here comes the Dragon Blade. He has 76 insights. He slices it out. Has some math trouble. You get that? That's a double kill for Pluppy so far. Not to mention the teleporter. Takes out McCree for a triple, and Pluppy going to put the team on his back as IDDQD almost certainly going to take point A off this. Yeah, Archer tries to do something, takes out Hulk in, in the back end, but there's no reason to try to throw lives at this in defense now. They're just going to try to set up their defense, but already at their spawn door is Mendo with an orb. Yep, so Mendo uh, with the orb, and really, uh, we just see a lot of very, very aggressive play coming out from IDDQD, and this is what you want. You don't want a team to get comfortable on Hollywood streets because once they do, it can be an absolute pain to actually dislodge them. Yeah, so they are going to fight over the roofs now. This is Lynx versus Pluppy in a one-on-one. -on -one. Both have an orb, pretty good advantage. Artir now coming into, and it looks like they've switched up their composition to double orb as well, so it's going to be a lot of one-on-ones. -on crew just kicks Mendo in the face. Nice stuff coming out from Crew. And, yeah, I mean, we see now Flat Earth able to solidify a little bit on defense, and this is what you want. You don't want to get blitzed down. You want to hold the high ground and make things really rough, and Flat Earth might be doing just that here on Hollywood. Yeah, the best answer to this happens to be running the exact same thing, but with two Genjis, you cannot let Genjis get above you on the high ground and just bully you out right now there are oh, orbs on both of them both discord and harmony yep so uh this is genji war left and right genji's getting uh, good orbs genji's getting bad orbs they don't know what to think anymore but it does look like IDDQD is able to solidify their uh, rooftop game a little bit more mendo takes out bonathil and now the momentum definitely shifting in IDDQD's favor. Yeah, Pluppy takes down Lynx too. Artier has to try to find some uh, avenue for revenge as yesterday getting one on one beat Pluppy on Dorado. It effectively lost. Look at Pluppy, his Pluppy. Game. Oh, he gets kicked in the face by Crew. Crew uh, on point with his melee game. Definitely uh, taking out aggressors. First Mendo, then Pluppy. He's got but... his dancing shoes on. Yeah, the payload though has made a lot of progress, and IDDQD, even if they get wiped out here, they gotta feel pretty good about where things are. Super aggressive offensive teleporter too, comes right down in the bank. Yeah, and they are not gonna get wiped out. Uh, defensive transcends comes out, but no one really to benefit from it, just stalls the payload for a little bit, and IDDQD is starting to make a very, very good time as they are pushing even further in. Actually, that's the hotel and billiards, not the bank. My bad on the call. So, Mendo uh, already deep in, gets a double kill. And now, look at this momentum. Look at, this is the power of this comp. It keeps people off guard. It doesn't let the defense set up. And the defense gang pushed really, really far back now, Hex. No, to be able to safely set up and run out of spy, you have to not leave spawn. That's how close they are on it. Both Mendo and Pluppy are up front, at spawn, with orbs. They need no help from their team. Crew dies because of it. They can't even peek out.
They do. They're already yeah, a fair. No, this is might, this is. Oh. This is just great for them so far. Uh, Pluffy getting pushed back a little bit. Mendo was uh, camping the other spawn door. They uh, both took a spawn door each. Uh, Mendo, though, takes out the Farah. Chips again on the McCree. Here comes the Pulse Bomb. Blows up crew. And this should be game in favor of IDD2D. That's a lot of people wiped out. The payload is almost at its destination. There might be a small chance for a little bit more of an overtime, but I don't think so. Oh, absolutely. Brutal. Hang on, Diva. Not able to get there in time. Let's close, though. Once that composition gets going, um, you can't ever run out of spawn alone or with one person or three people. You need your full six to try to regroup because you will get absolutely picked off by Pluppy and Mendo up front. Yeah, really, really good stuff. And look at Pluppy. This is where Pluppy went in and sliced and diced all sorts of ways. So now we're going to get to see the IDD QD defense versus Flat Earth. And Flat Earth, uh, this is a little bit of a difficult time to be, especially with how <laughs> the time is, in fact, 420. Yeah. I'm just going to leave that as it is. No, I don't, no that's 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 a cool That's time. the official time. It is the official time. We're not it's making memes. It's 420. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, everyone making the obvious jokes in chat. Thanks, guys, for keeping it classy. And we're not even at the Twitch chat part of it yet. No, we're just in game chat. That's why it makes me laugh. Uh, Mendo and Pluppy, does, they, they amuse me, man. If you haven't checked out their streams and you're looking for some Overwatch streamers to watch, of course, watch Siegel. I will give him his props. Very fun to watch. Very talented player. Um, I like the personalities of Mendo and Pluppy. I like to make fun of them in chat and give them grief. Um, I'm not sure how much they like me stopping by their chats. But if, if you're looking for a little more relaxed, fun experience, I would definitely check out those guys' streams. Yeah, really good stuff. So, 420 is the time for Flat Earth to beat going into this next game. Uh, we're going to get to the IDD QD defense, and uh, the key for Flat Earth is very much what the key for IDD QD was there. Uh, high aggression and don't get caught in the middle. Yeah, it seemed like Flat Earth uh, wasn't really certain if they wanted to stick on that double orb composition that they, they started running on the streets of Hollywood. It wasn't working out great for them, but they did end up switching completely to, they, I think I saw Zarya there at the end. Artyr went back to his comfort zone and uh, started on McCree, didn't get a lot of work done. Everyone was just kind of panic switching into strange uh, classes, and it didn't work out for them as they continued to get rolled. Uh, looks like we we're going to add a little more static defense, though, from uh, IDD, or no, from Flat Earth, rather. Uh, yeah, looking at uh, IDD QD uh, on their defense as they come out, we got uh, Internet Hulk on the Symmetra, Chips Gen on the Zenyatta, and the Bridge Up on the Lucio, Fluffy on Reaper, uh, Coco on Reinhardt, and Mendo probably going to be switching off to McCree. There it is. Here comes Mendo. So, yeah, I saw Torbjorn. I got uh, flashbacks of earlier today, just dwarfs getting slaughtered at the cliffs. Indeed. No Torbjorn actually out, though. Um, it does seem like they're going to run a... Coco is going to be Reinhardt. Mendo is going to be... Wait, did you already do this one? I'm so lost, man. All right, so... Sorry, catch my breath. It looks like Flat Earth is going to run on offense. Bromos will be Lucio. Artyr will be Genji. Lynx will be the Tracer. They are going to double up on Zenyatta with both Vonathil and crew, and Drakaeus will run their Symmetra. Okay, I'm back. All right. All right, so 420 is the time to beat. Uh, the timer will start in five seconds. This is Flat Earth. They need to beat IDD QD's time, but if any team can do it, it just might beat Flat Earth. There it is. The timer is set, and on we go. This is uh, map number three. Flat Earth versus IDD QD. IDD QD uh, trying to position themselves to go up two maps to one in our Ghost of Gamers Overwatch Weekly Grand Finals. Yeah, not an impossible time to beat, especially not with this composition, but it's all going to kind of hinge on the first minute or so on first point here. Pluppy does take down our team very quickly, though Pluppy on Reaper. Yep, so let's see if Lynx can uh, do a little bit in the back. He is under pressure from Mendo. Going the run back or the other way. Gets some good poke on the Reinhardt, but has to be careful. Will die to Mendo in the end. So both Tracer and Genji dying very quickly. And this is a good early defense from IDDQD. Yeah, that's absolutely the opposite of what you want to see out of that composition. Not only are they dead, they got no picks either. They're going to have to completely reset and try a different uh, approach here. Yep, indeed. So, taking a look at Artyr as Artyr goes in. Artyr going to try and uh, duplicate what we saw from Pluppy. Pluppy was able to crack the defense and then some. And Artyr, he is in that role for Flat Earth. Uh, gets orbed very quickly, has to be careful. Doesn't want to hold that for too long. Reaper in on him, Zenyatta in on him, but he is managed to live. Okay, takes out Mendo. Lynx takes out the teleporter, but Artyr will get on the Pluppy. So, uh, both teams uh, getting their licks in at each other here, but the defense does seem to have a little bit more momentum and they also have a teleporter. So. Yeah, but offense has a teleporter too and it's actually in, it's in-house. They're getting uh, kills too, so they're yeah, the five offense, down. Uh, yeah, the offensive teleporter doing work and they're actually keeping the momentum, uh, surprisingly. Puppy goes down, Puppy not able to stay alive as much as they're expecting. And now, here's the real test. Will Flat Earth be able to keep things going, going forward on the next point? Yeah, they need to be sending in both Genji and Tracer now and then we do see Lynx going forward with the orb, Artyr going forward with the orb. They are sending them far forward in front of everyone. Yep, 
So, uh, Flat Earth, they need to keep moving. They don't want to get stalled out here. Yeah, you can't suffer an offensive life. If they do, just time-wise alone, it would probably be the end of it. Pluppy, though, able to take out Art here. And uh, here comes the Plupster. He is coming in on the defensive Genji. Mendo also on the defensive Genji now. There goes so they want to control the rooftops with this double Genji gameplay. We need to see how this works out. Yeah, Coco able to take down Lynx. Coco actually on Sniper right now. And Art here has just never been able to get the best of Pluppy in one-on-one -on -one Genji situations. Yeah, Mendo just took out Cruz. So both Genjis for IDDQD doing work. And yeah, I mean, the double Zen, double Genji uh, being very, very effective thus far. Art here able to take out Mendo. A little bit of... Uh, Life in Fight Earth here. They only have two minutes left. They need to fly through this area. Link takes out in the bridge above. And now the momentum might be starting to go the way of Flat Earth. Offensive Transcendence is out. Dragon Blade is out. Links with another pick off. Here comes Dragon Blade from our tier. Flat Earth making it work. If Symmetra goes down. He needs to take out the teleporter, though. The teleporter is still alive in that building. Yeah, our tier just kind of focusing on Coco now. Wants to take that sniper off of the rooftop if he can. He does. Links. That was uh, just an absolute clinic put on by Links and. <laughs> Uh, Art here, there. Link's actually bombed the teleporter and got a kill as someone came out as well. So, uh, Flat Earth making things happen. They don't have a minute 30 left, though, so they have to continue moving this payload X. Yeah, and they look to do so as Link's and Art here both get in. Both have orbs again. This is how that composition is supposed to run. They've got the momentum. Yep, we do see the Dragon Blade out now. Uh, here it comes from Pluppy. Pluppy gets one kill so far. Andre Chaos wants to go even further. Has Art here in his sights. Can he do that? No, he's going to get taken out. Uh, Genji War intensifying as it were and again flat earth with a lot of momentum here they're making this work the defense is getting stuttered and uh mendo with a little bit of life able to take out crew but he's gonna find that a little bit difficult as a solo tracer the release time before people yeah mendo and look at that bomb it takes out another two it is very helpful but they are gonna get the, to the point here so this is so kind of a section where they'd actually stall anyway just because of the dynamics of the map I'm not sure there's enough time here. I mean, there's 45 seconds left. Maybe if they keep moving very quickly, it's not mathematically impossible. Links with a double bomb doing work. Uh, we see Puppy in the back is going to get taken up by Drakaeus. I love the speed coming up from Flat Earth. I just don't know if they have enough time, Hex. Yeah, it is going to be very close, though. The card is going to continue to move. If they get stopped once at all, that is definitely going to be over. The teleporter is up on the, the card has to be on like three for pretty much the entire time here. They need to be far out. I think if even a single person dies, they're not going to get it. And even then, I just feel like they don't have to stall for too long on the IDDQD side, but this is such a close game so far. Uh, just absolute craziness between Tracers and the Genjis over the payload, but enough has been stalled out. 10 seconds remaining. IDDQD going to take map number three, going up 2-1, but man, Flat Earth did not make it easy on them. No, uh, really impressive showing, just showing like how well Flat Earth can run that composition as well. Once they got going, they kept it going too. And there's some really standout play from Lynx and R tier, who yesterday and so far today had been outclassed by their counterparts in both Mendo and Fluffy. But today they showed up and R tier with a little bit of uh, redemption there as he took out Fluffy a couple times in 1v1s. Uh, I mean, I really liked what we saw from both teams here. Both teams really showing that they are very, actually, pretty close in skill level, at least in this series, where Flat Earth, yes, they had a slower time on Hollywood, but they were flying through it almost as quick as IDDQD. So I really love what we're seeing from them, and uh, Hex, we're going to either Hanamura or Volskaya next. Yeah, why We not? are done with Payload. Um... It'll be interesting to see. Of course, now we have a history with IDDQD being successful on Volskaya, so maybe you go to Hanamura instead. Uh, let's watch this Mendo play, though. This might be one of the numerous pulse bombs that went off. Uh, it seems like I wonder if this is the game. triple pul or like the double pulse bomb uh, as they were moving forward. I'm not sure. Really he does have a pulse bomb here, however. There's a pulse bomb. Nice stuff from Mendo. Yeah, this is towards the very end, and that definitely uh, sealed the deal for IDD QD. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, Flat Earth telling IDD QD, if you guys don't want to go to capture points, then don't ban out the King of the Hill maps. Yeah, <laughs> and IDDQD saying, quote, nah, man, King of the Hill are scary, smiley face. Yeah, these two teams getting to know each other pretty well. Started off Friday when with our, uh, you know, Creation Esports King of the Watch uh, tournament, a little show match that happened. Uh, Flat Earth uh, showed up and they beat uh, IDDQD on Nepal, the only map they were able to take that day in a, in a mm. one to four loss. But now they've beaten IDDQD on King's Row, and they put a pretty good showing up on Hollywood. So still, I mean, I definitely everyone favored IDDQD heading into this um, this set, but Flat Earth has definitely showed up and nothing to uh, be ashamed about today. And it's not even over yet. Yeah, no, I mean, Flat Earth, I would not be surprised if they came back, took uh, map number four, which will be a capture point map 
And then it would bring us to a map number five, which would also be a capture point map. So maybe the story is being uh, set here for an IDD QD upset. You never know. That being said, IDD QD, they are up two maps to one right now. They are in the driver's seat. They only need to win one more map to finish out our tournament and win the grand prize. And speaking of the prizing, uh, by the way, we are, have been working with Matt Torino for our crowdfunding today. We are up to $535 on the prize pool. All this money goes to the players in a 70-30 first place, second place split. So uh, if you've liked what you've seen here and want to throw some uh, money towards the players that are playing, uh, you can go to our Matt Torino link. Uh, I believe all the coupon codes are used now, but you know you can still throw your own in should you wish. And the support is very, very much appreciated. Yeah, 535, huge uh, prize pool. Of course, our prize pool does start off with, uh, you know, generous furnishings from Rocket and DX Racer. Let's not forget them as well. But also thank you to everyone for watching, tuning in and donating for free. Indeed. I love that phrase. I, I think it's, it's starting to irk people and people are also getting on board. So it's very twitch in its nature. But to donate for free has been divisive and I enjoy it. There you go. A man who enjoys his controversy. So we are going the Volskaya. People are saying comrade in chat. Uh, and, you know, if you're going to say comrade, get into the full spirit of it. Let's see some Zarya play. Yeah, I, I've i always liked uh, Zarya on this map and Gibraltar, actually, too. I think she's pretty good. But, you know, we're, we're seeing so much less double tank compositions that she really just doesn't fit in there anymore. She's kind of more of a, you know, she reminds me a little bit of Sonya in Heroes of the Storm, where you can't really solo tank as her, but she's a good bruiser. Mm -hmm. You get that damage going. It's good to offset. But we're kind of... Uh, very far away from the double tank, double support, double DPS meta that we saw, you know, kind of dominate the first half of beta. Yeah. So uh, we are just about ready to go into map number four. This is the Ghost of Gamers Overwatch Weekly Grand Finals. This is IDD QD versus Flat Earth. And here we go, Hex. Yeah, match point for IDD QD. If they can somehow manage to win this control point map, they will win uh, three to one over Flat Earth. Flat Earth looking to force this to a game and map five, which would take place on Hanamura. Indeed. So, again, I'm not really sure what to expect. We did see uh, IDD QD come out with the double orb comp, and maybe they're just going to do that again from the looks of it. It was very effective. I mean, they set an incredibly quick time of a minute, 44 seconds against mix up just a little bit ago so maybe we might see more of that uh capture point maps very variable that's why teams tend to go away from them because it really only takes one good push to win as opposed to payload which requires multiple good pushes so if you manage to get your good push in the beginning you can set a dramatically faster time than what the other team might get it is so difficult to really decide when to retreat on control points like this because that's why they were able to set such a blazing time, not only the composition, but just how control points are designed. You're not really fighting between the first control points, right? So if you don't have a good defense set up and you're retreating uh, quickly and just giving up the first point instead of fighting towards it, you're going to get rolled onto the second point too. I wouldn't be surprised in some cases to see teams, if we see control points enter the competitive metamore, just absolutely not defend first and really just put all their stock into defending last. So taking a look at things here for the defense side, we got Bromass on the 76, Lynx on the Widowmaker, Defensive Widow on Volskai, Artyr on McCree, Drakaeus on the Roadhog, Bonathil on the Mercy, and Crew rounding it out on the Zenyatta. Yep, double orb composition coming out from IDD, QD, Mendo and Pluppy, of course, on Genji as Nimbridge will play as Lucio. They will be supported by Coco and Chipsigen on Zenyatta, and Internet Hulk will play the offensive Symmetra. Lynx kills Pluppy right away. Yeah, that was a nice uh, quick pickoff by Lynx. Wasn't expecting it, but with Puppy down, uh, this will at least Look at this. Uh, Look lessen at this the hiding. odds of a quick uh, cap by IDDQD. That There's was... two kills now for the defense. Yeah, that was really cool. They're all hiding in the building. You almost never see a team hold up there, so they waited, got a hook one, and they came across the corner. As God bless Roadhog. Right. Roadhog, again, we don't see as much as I think I would like, but he is a very good hero. Drakaeus with another hook. Gonna take out Mendo Kusai with the aid of Artyr. Here comes Pluppy from the back, though. Nice deflect from Pluppy. Uh, Pluppy still being a pest. He is back after getting picked early on, and IDDQD relentless in their attack. They are still getting in here, and they are putting Flat Earth under a bit of pressure. But Drakaeus with another hook! Drakaeus uh, making the hooks happen here. Maybe Roadhog is the answer to this sort of... Uh, tankless comp that we're seeing coming out of IDDQD. It definitely helps, but the reinforcements are going to be absolutely brutal for Flat Earth here. Now, they were lucky that they lost Bromos early as he's able to sprint to the front lines, but it's such a long walk and they have no defensive teleporter. Yep, there is no defensive teleporter, but they are getting back here and I'm taking a look at Drakaeus, man. I want to see more of these hooks that have really been uh, uh, spelling trouble for the IDDQD side. Uh, Lynx was under pressure. He killed Coco. He got away. He finally went down to Fluffy, but not before the damage was done. Uh, Genji now in a little bit of trouble, Fluffy in the back, Dragon Blade is out, but no, he gets just annihilated by the hook. Drakea saying no to Genji, and 
is Roadhog the answer to Kaz with two kills so far and another hook on Coco. Look at all these beautiful hooks, Hex. The answer happens to be also just staying together as a team. I've never seen a team more clumped up than I've seen Flat Earth, and it's working for him because he can't just send a single player in there. Now he got face. another hook. Puppy getting hooked. He is going to deflect to save himself a little bit, but has to run away. Whole Hog is out. Mendel Kusai took out Archer in the back, finally takes out Drakaeus. So this might be uh, what IDDQD needs finally, but Flat Earth not making it easy on them. Yeah, that's, uh, Vonathil's actually kind of just suiciding in there so that they can get back on defense and set up a defense, though. Uh, they were able to sustain that long because they were kind of grouping together as a team and taking down the, the attackers one by one, but now Mendo and Puppy are already in on last. Yeah, they want to just snowball their momentum here. Go for it. Puppy takes out Bromass. They're going, and Offensive Transcendence is out. Down goes Crew. Two down for the defenders. Uh, our tier is down, three down, and IDDQD smells blood. They are on the point and uh, they might have a very quick cap of point B here. Yeah, it looks like they're getting in. Lynx is gonna try to shoot into a transcendence. Doesn't work out super well. Mendo and Fluffy had a couple kills. That's all she wrote. Yeah, and uh, after a very good point A defense, uh, Flat Earth not able to get settled on point B, and as a result, a pretty good time being set by IDDQD on map number four. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of that thing. I feel if they would have ran that defense just on last with kind of grouping together and running a Roadhog, they would have been better served. But once they lost first, they were never able to position themselves again. So good stuff coming from Mendo at the end. Slicing and dicing his way to victory. The time is 2.31, and will Flat Earth be able to beat it? We're going to find out. If they can't beat it, IDDQD will, again, three weeks running. Or was it four? I don't know. Be our Overwatch weekly champion it's a lot they haven't lost i mean, I, I mean just at the bottom line if anyone you know is wondering like who's the top team and you just can instantly say it's iddqd be like well i think this team's better it's like well you know IDQD hasn't lost and that's the end of the conversation um their team's getting closer though which, which is good to watch that they're not absolutely stomping i watched them friday and i thought it was going to be very one-sided all throughout the tournament i thought iddqd wouldn't even get close games but it shows that mix up has up their game flat earth even from friday it seems from yesterday has upped their game a little bit as well and are giving ID uh, QD some trouble, but ID QD is still the gold standard, and we're gonna have to see if Flat Earth can maybe take another map and force it to a game five. It's a tough time to beat, though. It is a very tough time to beat, so we're gonna see uh, if Flat Earth can do it. They're probably gonna have to run a similar combo, and they are. We already see, uh, look at the offensive line. We got Crew on a Zenyatta, Bromass on a Lucio, Vonathil on a second Zenyatta, two Genjis played by Artyr and Lynx, respectively, and Drakaeus providing the backbone of shields for that composition. Yeah, they're going to have to run it uh, as well as IDDQD or better, but they're going to have to go up. Internet Hulk's Symmetra for sure is going to come out, and I'm going to wait a moment on the rest of it, I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, I like watching uh, the setup for Symmetra. It's the, the world's quickest Symmetra. All the speed boosts are out. They just want her to get her turrets up as soon as possible. That is three ampit ups, and... Uh, you know, it's Sanic time for Symmetra. As she uh, gets out here and we'll get turrets up very, very quickly. Got to sim fast. So she gets her yeah, three <laughs> up and then the cooldown comes down. So then the cooldown will be off. She'll get a full six up. That is the reason that you see the Lucio speed bursting her out. A really cool little tactic that uh, as that IDDQD especially has developed recently. It looks like they are going to run a defensive Chorborn. It's going to be by Chipsogen. Mendo is going to play McCree. And a bridge above is going to be on Lucio. Coco will be playing the Reinhardt Ploppy on the defensive Widowmaker. So a much more def defense oriented team uh, from IDDQD this go around. Yeah, and we're just going to see how long IDDQD can hold. They don't have quite as much of a buffer as they did against Mixed Up, uh, but Flat Earth is going to have to move very, very quickly if they want to stay in this tournament and force a final decisive map number five. Yeah, that speed burst really coming to fruition already as you see all these sentries in different areas. Not only are they going to do damage and slow the other team, but they're going to alert uh, the, the entire team of when someone is coming in on a flank. Yep, so Pluppy, uh, watching that back door, we see Widows do that a lot. It's a really smart position to go to. Uh, Pluppy now switching over to the front, realizing that if he's going to get picks, it's going to come from there. He has the Genji in his sights. Deflect is up, though. Not able to get the pick just yet. Pluppy, though, uh, on point aim-wise. They're not helping Bromass, getting a kill each. Both teams down a player. Pluppy with a nice pick. Crew takes out the turret, and here comes the rest, but Pluppy... Good sight lines, but is uh, sort of getting pushed away here. Yeah, Lynx and R2 got absolutely dunked on to begin that fight. They both got taken out by the turrets. They're both in weird positionings. I mean, uh, R2, Lynx got Where in. Where is and uh, the odd man out here? He got two kills. He's been a uh, survivor of Zenyatta, but he is the uh, last support standing here. He, to take it, he might do it. 
Almost takes him out, hits two of those orbs. Uh, is on, does take out the bridge up at the very end. Mendo cleans him up, but nice stuff from crew. Yeah, now Artyr is go actually able to get in and get a couple kills, and now it's getting really brawly down there. Three down on each side. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the attackers have a big advantage for attacking point A, just in general. I don't think any team, unless they truly outclass the other team, would hold on here for that long. But looking at the time, Flat Earth does not have that much time if they want to stay alive in this tournament. They're getting this point, but they only have a minute 15 left to get to the next point, so they need to start. They're capping this now, but they need to start moving to point B, and they need the chain deaths, or it is going to be it. A minute 15 is plenty of time, as long as the defense isn't set up. We saw IDD QD capture this about 30 seconds. Fluppy, though, gets a pick on crew. If he can get another pick, it might seal the game. That being said, Artyr is in hot pursuit. He has the Dragon Blade ready, and uh, Flat Earth just needs to keep going here. Hex, 54 seconds are left. They do have time. They have a little bit of time to set them as much as they'd like. Mendo takes out Lynx. That's two down now for the attack. And it might be three very quickly as Mendo chases down Lucio. So now three down, four down with that final pick from Pluppy. And suddenly it is uh, danger time. Yeah, they were Flat able Earth. to transition into defense much stronger than Flat Earth was. We have a tele uh, we have a, a sentry oh, up RDL level two. Teleporter, though. This is sneaky. I love it. This is this is kind of the already... last push, though. We need yeah. to see them get through right now. They're coming in. Here comes the Dragon Blade. This is really good stuff. Here comes Art here. All right, will he get the Torbjorn? He gets the Torbjorn. That's one down for the defense. Buffy and Coco, though, able to even out. Two kills for them. The Dragon Blade is out. Uh, Artyr able to take out Aaron Hulk. Both teams down two players. Defensive Earthshower is down, but four kills for the attackers here. Meanwhile, at the time, it's eight seconds left. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I don't think they got it, Hex. So close. That's so close. I don't know. I, we're going to find out in a second here. Oh my god. We have, let's see the official in-game times because it, uh, our timer can be slightly off. It was 2.31 was the time that was set by IDDQD. So let's say, what if it was a tie? I don't think it's a tie, but uh, maybe. It's going to be very close. What is the time? 2.33! Oh no, it was two seconds too late, so IDDQD going to take the set in a heartbreaker. That is the closest finish we have ever had. Congratulations, IDDQD. They're going to take the tournament. They're going to take the 70% share of our prize pool of $535.20, and they will maintain the title of top team in Europe, but what a series. Wow. Fantastic. And we'll talk about IDDQD as we go on and maybe we'll get an interview too. And we could say it as much as you want about IDDQD and the superlatives and uh, hammer on the praise of them all you want. And you would not be wrong for a second of it. But Flat Earth showed me something today. They looked really good. They're one of the few teams that can really hang with IDDQD as well as mix up. Uh, the future looks pretty bright for the teams looking to fight above. IDDQD still the cream of the crop, but not untouchable anymore. Yeah, I mean, Flat Earth, that was a great showing by them. They almost forced a map number five, and who knows where it would have went from there. They were two seconds away, Hex. 231 to 233. So, we, that was amazing. Uh, that being said, huge shout out to all you guys for watching. We're going to try and get a, a winner's interview for you with IDD QD. Uh, you won't want to miss it. Stay tuned. This is Ghost Gamers Overwatch Weekly. IDD QD wins the grand finals 3 to 1 in a very close set, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Stay tuned.